Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams. This is our family story of our move to the south of France to a 53-room castle during COVID lockdown with two small children and all of our animals. Now we're here, we will show you some renovation, go on some adventures, and in addition to that, we'll also try and pick up some French culture in this beautiful region and also have a lot of fun with our volunteers. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Chateau Dreams. I'm currently in the stable yard actually, so a slightly different view. I hope you're well wherever you are. I thought this week, after the tour of the cellars and the hidden rooms, I thought let's go into that a little bit more. And a number of you had raised some really good points and some really good questions. So why don't we go and discover the answers together? Thanks so much for watching. One of the comments we received was from lovely Thierry Milan. And thank you for your comment, Thierry. I know you asked about the archives, the archives in mont de -Marsan, And we've been there, which has been great. When we're doing that, we are looking using Justin Laurence, who we know was here, the finance minister of France and the governor of Algeria, and trying to go backwards in time to look into the archives via his lawyer to see if he bought this place and if he did buy it, whom he bought it from. What we've seen so far is that he was clearly incredibly wealthy because there's been a number of transactions so far, but as yet, nothing mentioning the castle. So more time to go backwards there, I think, and uh, a little bit more research to do, more books to get out. It's quite fascinating. This is Arthur's new baby Solcata tortoise who arrives today from Paris. Welcome, little one. Do you remember lovely Ellie, our wonderful au pair who revisited us? She was in a bookshop in Montpellier where she went on to after being with us for a few days with a friend. And miraculously there, she found a map in an old bookshop, which I will show you, which shows clearly the location of the castle and also some interesting structure around it. It's not in huge amounts of detail because it is a Mont de Marsan map. And I'm wondering whether these structures we can see are gardens. Let's see what you think. So this map was produced for the Minister of the Interior. It's sheet 33. Here is Chateau La Bataille, you can see with a blue circle. And to zoom in shows this strange, I don't know, buildings or gardens or something associated. What do you think they are? First off, the hidden rooms on the other side of the castle. So as you know, they seem to be shut from the cellar side all the way down, as I said, um, to this area here, which is just down past where Ida hand painted those flowers and the entrance with the arrow slit. So let's go and have a look there quickly because you can see the other wall that I think has been placed in to shut down the other side. Let's see what you think. As you can see, Ida's flowers are standing up well. Is the other end, if you like. So look at this. I know I've showed this on the outside tour, but now we're getting right into it. Have a look at these rocks. Very old. This is the door. Now you can see, unsurprisingly, there's been a massive lock on here, but it's been removed. And now we have this key hole, which is actually, looks to my mind, upside down. It's interesting because a lot of the keyholes in the chateau are actually upside down. So whoever did this, I'm guessing, did the others, or it would have seemed to me that they're upside down. So here we are. This is the doorway with the arrow slit that you will have seen before on the external castle tour, looking at the outside. Let's go inside and see what we can see. And the rooms that are blocked in start this end of the castle under here. And there's definitely, I believe, some evidence of a closed in wall. But as I say, let's see what you think. And again, look at the size of this wall here. Excuse my nails, I've been gardening again. Um, look, and the doors obviously been moved because there's a 
one here and one here. They're really clever though because you can't actually jimmy into the door and open it from the outside because you just hit this rock. Um, as you can see there was another arrow slit over there on the left hand side of the picture. This is actually the old kennels. Um, we haven't done thing with yet. There's a little bit of a side of this arrow slit. Very, very old stone there. Let's look at the other side. And on the other side, sorry about the cobwebs. Those of you who don't like spiders, I apologise. This might have been a, a window or something through the bars. And then look at this here. This is what I wanted to show you. So the rooms on this side, if you like, if you were going all the way under the castle from the other blocked inside, they'd actually come to here and look. This, to my mind, I don't know what you think, but this, to my mind, looks like it's been done in a hurry. Can you see? And this is the other side of that space. So as we can see here, this is what the walls should look like. All the stone is the same form and then it's been plastered over. And the same at the back there. But then on the other side, look, look at how different it is. Anyway, it's just my supposition. Let me know what you guys think. Silver's decided what he wants. Time for a good sit down and a nap. Now, Stephanie, I know you mentioned, didn't you, about getting some LIDAR equipment from a local university. Gracious, look at that hole up there we need to fix. Um, and going through the wall. I think that's a brilliant idea. I don't know which university we need to get, though, so any ideas, let me know. Um, I thought uh, the other one that I wanted to answer from you, and I've got my trusty tape measure, is whether that door that we've got there um, does actually fit into the arches. So let's go and have a look together and see what we can find. I won't subject you to the entire walk down because it takes a little bit of time. And let's go find this door, this medieval door again. Now, what I would say about this is that Lisa had a really good point. She said, looking at it, it could be St. John the Baptist. If it is St. John the Baptist, that's very interesting because the Pope many, many years ago got rid of the Knights Templar. And one of his reasons for doing that was that he said that they may have worshipped according to him rather than worshipping Jesus. They may have gone and worshipped Jesus' teacher, John the Baptist. So if that is the case, that yet again would point to some possible, believe it or not, Templar, collect, uh, Templar connection here. How exciting. Let's have a look at this door in greater detail. And thanks, Lisa, for that thought. It's really fascinating. And I hadn't put the two together. So marvellous. So coming back to this door, and I will, it's on its side. I'm not strong enough to flip it around and there's no one here to give me a hand. We know that this is definitely medieval because the archives said that it is, and they would know. Um, let's have a bit of a closer look because the historians of you guys have already been incredibly helpful. So let's see if there's anything you can pick up from this. Apart from the fact it clearly needs some repair. There we go. And look at these down here, which I think are really rather fun. Oh. I've been practicing with nail varnishes, so I apologize. I'm trying to choose a color for autumn. I think I'm gonna go for pumpkin. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Oh, look at that. It's really beautiful, isn't it? Well, I think it is anyway. And this one. So, I'm gonna flip the phone around. So Lisa said in the comments, if you can have a look, you can see her comment there, that this could be John the Baptist. Because apparently she says he was always dressed in shaggy clothes. And then of course that might make a lot of sense, Lisa, because look, the lamb, the lamb of God, I wonder. And as I said earlier, again, this points to a potential Templar connection. And then we had a comment from, again, from 
a lovely lady, I think, C. Ferguson, um, asking if this medieval door is the same size as the one in the blocked-in cellar. And I think probably the best thing we can do, let's measure it together now. I've got my trusty tape measure. Here we go. Obviously, I'm doing this on my own, so bear with me. And we'll see what we get to. Okay, so here we go. So this is showing me this tape that the measure appears to be 224-ish, 223.5224, at the longest point, so the highest part of the arch. And also the top of the arch is flat. So let's see if it's there and go into the cellars and go and have a look. Hopefully there's no bats today. There were the other day. In addition to the arches down in the cellar, there, is, there are also arches here which lead out into the back. There is also a chapel or what's known as a sepulch somewhere in the grounds. But as I say, we haven't found out where that is yet. I have a feeling it might be an underground mausoleum. So I'm going to try my trusty measure and see if this is this. These doors are the 224. So I haven't undone the tape so I can have a look. You can probably hear it in the background. So again, as I said, I'm on my own. So I apologize. I'm going to have to measure it and then show you two secs. OK, so this is really interesting. This arch here, I just assumed probably was the size of those doors. And in fact, that medieval door may have just fit on here, or I just thought maybe that's the case, but actually it's not from here behind us because this is just the door itself is at least 228, 229. Um, so just th that door, there is no way it would be the door for here. So obviously we're not in the cellars at the moment. We are in what's termed the garden rooms. Um, again, very old part of the castle, but let's go into those cellars now. Again, the walls here in this part, you know, we are under the oldest part, as you can see, on this very, very old stone. As we go back in towards the cellars itself, or rather the cellars, here we go. And as we go through the first room of the cellars, thank you so much, um, PRV, uh, for confirming that this is indeed something for cleaning the chimneys. That's really exciting. Thank you very much. Badger, it's lovely to see you down here, but you did give me a little bit of a shock growing up behind me. Certainly not the part of the place that you want to be on your own with someone jumping on the backs of your legs. Anyway, here we go. I'm actually quite pleased you're here though. Makes it a little bit less spooky down here. Just a five meter tape. Measure it out to the two, two, three that it actually was and just see. Um, but hey, let's discover this together. So rather than me doing it with my teeth, which is the only way I can do it, I'm going to put this down, flip back into another take and we can have a look. But I promise not to do it unless you're with me. Two, we're looking at 207. So no. 207, 208. 207, 208. Uh, two, oh, yeah, 207. 207. So this 207 suggests that actually the door doesn't come from here. However, let us not be discouraged because actually the floor that's in here is a modern floor. And it's clearly been really put down. So I'm guessing they must have raised the floor up a bit. So it is possible. Let's have a look at this floor and see what you think. But it does have a new floor in it. So, which is, looks incredibly modern. Uh, so it's very difficult to tell how high this floor actually was. Um, so I would say it is possible. But actually, let's have a look at the other side as well. Because the other side. Um, no, they're both the same. They're both the same size. So maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe interesting. But let me show you what I've discovered upstairs. Let me know what you think, by the way. Do you think the floors come up? While we're down here, I thought we'd take a sneak peek at some of the wine. I would say the jury's out as to whether that door actually fit there or whether maybe it belongs to the chapel that we haven't yet found in the grounds. Really, well, I did want to show you this discovery with the hall flooring, which I personally think is fascinating. So, here we are back in the entrance hall. 
I don't know if you saw the earlier video of the tour of the Napoleonic entrance hall made to impress, but in that we look at this space in quite a lot of detail. If you've seen that video, you'll remember that the floor is composed of very old, obviously handmade terracotta tiles, and what I describe at the time as a volcanic lava floor. And the reason I say this is because of the bubbles you can clearly see in the black tiles. Why is this relevant? Why am I so excited? Well, actually, because if you look very, very closely at the tiles, it could be, I'm not saying it is, but it could be obsidian, which is the upper portion of rhyolitic lava formed under very, very high pressure. In most incidences, excuse me, unless the piece is very, very thin, it tends to be opaque. But unlike um, normal uh, lava that you would see, or the other forms of lava, um, it is very smooth. And for, and for this reason, the ancient Greeks actually used to use it for mirrors, believe it or not, because you can shine it to a high shine. Well, why is this relevant to us and why is it relevant to this castle? The question is, is this evidence maybe of another Templar connection? Let's have a look at the tiles and let's see what you think. <laughs> that I was just doing and clearly I'm no cleaner um, but as we look at the oiling I don't know whether you noticed the grain I tried to get some real close-ups there of the grain it's very very smooth and not what I would personally expect to see of lava the second point sorry the second point I think that's quite relevant is that Scott, when he was here who was an IT engineer did all of the internet for us here because it was very difficult and he mapped it um, with, I don't know what it was, some piece of kit that basically shows how the Wi-Fi is and isn't moving and how it moves around the castle. Now we have to actually have two here anyway because of the length of the building, but that's, that's another thing. Um, aside from that though, as you come into the entrance hall, one of the main routes is, is over there in my study. And as soon as you get to the next room, it literally drops off a cliff. And Scott thought that this might be representative of something below this space, uh, something in the basement, maybe a metal or something that was jarring the signal. Who knows? Or maybe it's just the obsidian itself because it does have some property, um, I'll look it up, some energetic property that it means it can interfere with wave signals. Who knows? Anyway. Well, everyone, thank you very, very much for your time and your patience this week. I know it was something different, but I really enjoyed receiving the questions this time and some of the comments and some of the thoughts that you guys had. So what I wanted to do was go round with you and discover the answers to those questions together. I hope you find the other side entrance or found the other side entrance to the hidden rooms interesting and also the possibility of the floor we've got here um, and whether or not there are links to the templars. Who knows, but it's going to be quite fun to find out. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a super week wherever you are and um, look forward to catching up soon. Bye-bye.